Greetings, aliens and fellow astronomy fans. Tonight I'm going to do some targets in the next dome outside. I'll start here in the office where I have the remote set up and I can go outside and show you the equipment that I'm using outside. Uh, but first up, this is how I remotely do everything with the next dome. In the office, usually I can do everything if, if I don't have to clean out water from the gutter of the next dome. I can usually start things right away from inside without going outside at all. I have the remote FOSS cam out there on the one screen, and then on the other screen is the remote connection using Windows RDP. Okay, I just left the house on the way up here to the dome. That's the view at nighttime from my suburban backyard. Complete with the bowling alley and their obnoxious center light that I've asked them to put a shield over and they still haven't done even though they told me they would. That's a whole other story. Uh, of course, nothing I can do about that over there. Alright, now we're inside the dome. I've got the lights on, headlamp on, and I turned the heater on before I came out. So obviously, I'll turn the heater off before I start imaging and wait till the temperature gets back down to where it was beforehand. Uh, back there in the corner is the mini PC that runs everything. Uh, this guy here on the wall is the uh, web control unit. That I can remote turn on everything. And down here we have the, the uh, DC generator. There it is, sorry. CEM120 here. You can see the wiring for all that. And I have a USB 3 that I ran here so it could run this N-Step Rigel Systems focuser because it needed extra power uh, via USB 3 because the 2's aren't powered. Here we have the ASI 294 camera, the MC Pro, ready to go. I have the filter wheel, the mini filter wheel uh, from ZWO. In there I have the Allen Hans. I have I have a sky globe, but I'm going to be taking that one out. The Allen Hans blows it away. I also have an HA filter for F7. And so, uh, that one is 7 nanometers, I believe. And then the one for F2 with the Hyperstar is a Bader that I have in there. And I also have a UV IR cut in there as well. I will be adding a uh, filter for planetary uh, for Venus, an IR pass filter. I got an 807 for that. We'll try to capture some clouds. Uh, but for tonight, it's just F7, the ASI 294. We've got the um, 46. T, uh, T46 connector for the F7 reducer here on the telescope. And there's the Rigel and its gears for turning the focus knob remotely. I've got a dew heater up here on the telescope on the top, mounted on the rail. Some finder scopes for optical, and of course, up here, I also have the ASI 290 Mini MM into a uh, SV Boney uh, 60 millimeter finder scope for guiding, mainly for Hyperstar. I have to get the uh, OAG going here for F7. Tonight I don't have it ready yet. Okay, now we're back inside here. I'm remotely connected in my office here. I've got the RDP open and now I'm going to show you what we do to get the next home rolling. Uh, first things first, we're going to open it bring up that I'll bring back the camera view here in one second let's go ahead and hit the open button on the next dome come back once it's completely open here it's moving on up takes about I believe around a minute to fully open the way I have it set right now we are now completely open 99% close enough the next step I do in this process, this differs from person to person the way they have things configured, but this is the way I've got it with that web control unit. I go ahead and I turn on the DC, uh, the pier, and I make sure the dehumidifier is off. I already have it off. And that 
is that? So now we're ready to go. I can come back over here, get my CM120 panel up and running. And while we're waiting here, I'll come over here to the ASCOM device hub and I will connect the telescope. And I will now go to the dome and I want to send it home once just to be safe so everything's in sync. So now the dome is going to rotate back to the home position which is behind the camera basically. And that will do its thing. In the meantime I come over here into NINA, Nighttime Imaging and Astronomy which is basically like SGP. I've never used SGP, but I've, I like what I see in Nina so far. It seems to do what I need to do. I have no problems using it. Um, I'm going to close this and reopen it. It's out of sync, it looks like. So I'll start from scratch down here. I also have to connect the Stellarium scope so I can control Stellarium, open Stellarium, and also connect everything here, and PHD2, hit F11 to shrink the size of the screen on Stellarium, and now we're ready for Nina. Nina. Okay, I'm loading the profile. The nice thing about Nina is that you can set different profiles. In this case, I have the F7 profile here, and I have a Hyperstar profile. So I'm going to load the profile. Got the camera ready to connect. So we go through and connect the equipment. Turn on the cooler. ZWO filter wheels on. And now we've got our in-step focuser. Turn on temperature control. No rotator, and here comes the telescope. And the guider for PhD2. And for weather, using the Boltwood plug-in. And there we can see the weather watcher information. So now I can go back to imaging. And this is usually where I'll, I'll get things in focus here first. Now, I'm uh, there's a, probably a, a ton of different ways you can do the focusing, the initial focusing. This is the way I do it. Uh, I'm going to set the exposure time to 4. I'm going to turn it to the L Enhance filter, which I'll use for the Crab Nebula. Uh, set the bin, or the gain, I rather, to 120. I'm going to loop this. And these windows they can be moved to the sides like this. You just hold hold them in and, and latch on to the target points that appear. I found that out. Uh, it took a while to figure that out. A little hidden secret. Okay, so now we need to move to a target. So I'm going to go into Stellarium. And I guess the first thing I'll do is I'm going to search for the Crab Nebula. So right there is where we need to be. I can go down here and choose the current object, scope, and slew. And now I also have to slave the dome to the telescope. Now we can see it doing its thing here. Okay, so now the telescope has moved. We are aimed up towards the Crab Nebula. It hasn't been uh, plate solved yet. So what I can do is minimize this. Also, I'm going to come into sequence first, and I'm going to hit this button up here uh, for getting coordinates. That gets me the Crab Nebula. Alright, I put in the target name that I have all my folders named specifically the same so that each time I do a data set 
they fall under the same folder so I'll always have folders under this name now and into the future and uh, it makes it easier for doing uh, uh, post-processing. I'm going to set this to L enhance I'll turn dithering on to every frame, type in the gain, check uh, where we're at now, where we are later, and this guy is good pretty much hmm, probably till 2 a.m. Let's also turn on the HFR uh, star quality. Yeah, it's coming in now. Out of focus. I also need to make sure that I didn't leave the lens cap on, which I might have. No, I didn't. There we go. Ah, you can see the Crab Nebula. It's not in sync yet. We haven't played solved. It's up the top here on the PHD2 guiding with the ASI 290mm Mini. So we'll leave that there. I'm going to minimize it because it'll show up down here inside of Nina. So we're out of focus, so this is what I do. I have it on a loop, so it's going to take a new shot every four seconds. And I will begin incrementing in or out until I figure out which way to go with this. Uh, usually I use, I just type the number in here, or I use the actual end step here to go in and out and, and uh, focus. So let's start it off here at, uh, let's jump it up to 2000 and hit move. You can watch the current position here as it goes. That's actually worse. So, and I also want to zoom in a little bit in the center area because I have a filter wheel in here and the edges get distorted. So I try to look at only the center points. So that's 2,000. We were at 900. Let's go for minus 1,000. That's my hunch anyway. Now we're starting to look pretty good. So let's jump to 350 in small increments here and see if I can get it a little sharper. I will try 620, but I might have to go back to 590. 343. I think that's about where it was. Yeah, 353. Somewhere around 660. Let's just go to the sequence for the Crab Nebula. Now, even though I'm going to do this later, I'm going to just show one little quick sequence and that'll, that'll be it. Um, what I do is I set the autofocus to start. I set the temperature to, uh, I forget, I think 2 and 4 on the percentage on the HFR difference. Make sure those are both on. Slew to target's on, start guiding is on, and center target is on. And come back to the equipment. I'm going to make sure that the focuser temperature, yeah, temperature compensation is on. And that is it, I believe. Set the amount and how long I'm going to do each exposure. Probably shoot for about 120 or 180. I'm not sure. I'll try 180 to start. Everything is set good here, and I'll probably end up with at least 20 exposures later on. So, let's start this sequence. Starting the sequence, go back to our imaging tab. So let's see what's going on. Now this is our autofocus box down here. And it's going to do its autofocus routine after it does the plate solving. Here's the plate solving. I gotta remind myself I am using um, as tap for plate solving and it's incredibly fast. Okay, now comes the autofocus routine. Now just for reference, I have under autofocus these settings. Um, right now. I have been toying with changing them. I've been toying with the backlash settings. I did an auto backlash. Tried it. I uh, didn't like what I saw on the curves, so I, I just played around with numbers until I thought the curves looked better. There's the first jump from here to there. 
and you can see the position it's at now. It's at 2160 back here. These first two points were kind of squirrely. And that's what I was running into the last time I've been I was trying to adjust things was I was getting these little tail offs at the beginning and at the end. And I couldn't figure out why. They seem to be pretty symmetric though. You're supposed to have points lining up on from side to side looking straight across. And here pretty symmetric. I also have the files named such that uh, you can see the HFR in each file as they change. And that I set here in the imaging tab. I also put a bunch of other other options in here for the name. Of course fits. I've been having some problems with the Meridian flip and it seems to not be in sync with the actual telescope flip for some reason. I haven't quite figured that out yet. It doesn't really cause a problem. It just keeps trying to recenter until it, until it actually flips. So now it's in the middle of the first exposure. We're at 74 seconds. And we'll get to see what that looks like in a moment here. All right, there we go. After a mere 180 seconds, we end up with this fantastic preview image. Uh, you know it's looking pretty good if it's uh, that sharp there in the preview. Uh, my total guiding error here is about 0.61. Not the most ideal, but I guess not horrible. Um, that little blip here is the dithering. I don't know if the dithering actually makes the total jump up or not. I always dither, so I'm not sure anymore. Uh, we can zoom in a little bit here in this image and just take a look. Uh, it looks like I'm having some trailing problems. And I can take a look here in PHD 2 and check the star profile. And it's uh, pretty sharp. I don't really see a problem there. It looks like maybe the RA access is a little too aggressive. I could probably change the RA, I believe is what my understanding is on that. Try to make that a little less from the center. But that's what we got at 180 seconds. I had much better success with the Hyperstar. And uh, so I'll follow this up later with the uh, images from here. And if uh, you guys have any suggestions or uh, comments, please feel free to drop those in the video or on the web page. I'm always trying to learn more here as I go along. I'm still in my infancy of the uh, astrophotography realm here. Now it looks pretty good. Just an update. I changed a few settings and got the total error down a little bit too. And I lowered at RA down to 60 on aggressiveness and 182nd is still doing pretty good circular stars looks much better I wanted to point out that Stellarium has a really nice feature in here if we go down here to the menu and choose this symbol astronomical calculations window and go to the what's up uh, area and take a look at any category you want. I've added in the comment for pan stars that's in here. Uh, I had to do that manually. It wasn't too hard. Uh, but take a look at Bright Nebula. You can see everything that's up and target them, see where they're at in the sky. And I should also show this. I took a panoramic outside. That way this one tree in my west, in the west sky, I know pretty accurately when I have until the object will hit that tree or how high it is above the bowling alley for instance uh, thanks to the panoramic and followed some tutorials online to get that merged in as best I could it's probably within about five to ten degrees accuracy with this tree anyway so I have a good ballpark idea of the timing of it at least alright I'm back for one more segment here 
decided to take a few shots of the pan starters comment. In the meantime, I know it's going to end at 2 a.m., which will probably be plus or minus 30 minutes, well, more plus 30 minutes. So what I do is, since there's no direct way to uh, shut the dome within Nina as of yet, I have a, a scheduled task here. And I will set that trigger. It's already the right date, but let's bump this to about 2.45 to be safe. 2.45 a.m. It will run this script here using the C script. Dome closed park VBS that I have. First it checks a few parameters to make sure the dome is actually open. PhD running is one of them. Uh, because Cloud Watcher during the day will trigger a uh, not safe condition and run the script and I don't want it having to open up the dome software every time so I have some parameters set. Uh, so it will check the parameters and then go ahead and move the dome to home and close it at home because I had trouble with the shutter getting stuck in the park position recently. It was mainly due to the cold weather might have been contracted somehow or something like that. Um, so now I know home is safer so I go to home first and then back to park and this script will take care of all that and I can sleep and know that it's shut by the time I wake up or check on it in the middle of the night with a camera. As of right now this is still disabled so I've got to enable that and we should see the comment here. Now you can kind of see it right there on a short four second exposure and I have it set to 120 seconds. That makes the tail a little longer, but it also brings out some more detail too. Uh, I'm going to try that first. And there we go. There's 120 second exposure. Just want a little addendum here again. Uh, with Stellarium, if you set your parameters for your telescope focal length, your reducers under lenses. Here's the F7. Under sensors you can put in the camera information if I got this correct. I hope I have these set correctly. I think I do. You can also set off-axis guider information too. And once you do that, I found this target for Casper the Friendly Ghost, which I might try to shoot as well tonight if I have time. Um, when you zoom in, you can see exactly what you're framing. You can also do this within the framing tool of Nina as well. But at least here you can see where the object is in the sky and then zoom in from there. Uh, this is with the reducer and here would be without. If I was at F10, here's F7. I can also put on the Hyperstar uh, sensor as well. Well, it would be under, tele, uh, under lens reducer, I guess. Um, it has a nice little feature within the Stellarium. And so by comparison, putting in the Hyperstar, which I believe is 560 millimeter focal length, so 0.2 multiplier at 20, 0.2 times 2800 brings it to 560. This would be, this would be the view at 560.